Hi everybody, in this video we'll show you how to create your own AI customer service which detects the category of a product, the issue with it and automatically provides a response email for the customer. We're gonna use Doctran for the content extraction, Gmail for the email service and Langchain for creating the email. You can find the link for the code in the description. So to make this app work you cannot use your own password to log into Gmail but you need a special app password. I will provide you the link to create an app password in the description of the video and then just follow these simple steps to actually create an app password and then you can use that password to log in to the SMTP server. Okay, I'm currently here in PyCharm and as you can see on the left we've got different uh, Python files which contain all of the logic we need to make our service run. In the main .py is our entry point for the service and now we've got our env file which we need to set up the connection to Gmail and also the OpenAI API key which we need to make the service work. Let's start with the extraction.py. This is the file that contains all of the logic to fetch emails and also send emails. So let's start there. And first we need to import some packages and these are all email related packages and also async because we want to run our service uh, asynchronous and also Doctran is a library that has to run asynchronous. So that's why we set it up in an async way. So first we create a new class. We call that class email fetcher and we set up some variables in the constructor. So we set new properties like the user, password, the host for the email, the SMTP server, and also we define a whitelist because we don't want to process every email, but only from specific users. So this whitelist is helpful for, let's say, testing purposes, because in a real world environment, you don't want to have a whitelist for your customers, of course. So how this whitelist later works is it will look in the whitelist.yaml for all of the emails which are in there and then check is the email in the whitelist. And if yes, it will process the email. Otherwise, it will just continue and fetch new emails. OK, let's continue with the code. And first we have to set up a login function and we will use the imaplib um, module to log in. We log in with, to our host and we log in with our username and our password. Again, this is not a password uh, where we log in to Gmail, but this is the specific app password. And after logging in, we want to select the inbox. After logging in, we can create the functionality to fetch our new emails. We will use async to do this. So we will create a new event loop and use that in a thread pull executor to make that work in parallel. So we fetch our emails and then return the emails from this function. So this public method will under the hood call the private method which we have to implement. Okay, let's do that. And we call that method underscore fetch new emails. And first we will log in to the email server. This will be done because otherwise we could have a timeout uh, if we run that functionality in a loop. After some time it will time out and then the service will not work anymore. So we will log in and after fetching the emails we will log out. So every time we run that function we will set a new connection to Gmail. After logging in we will run the UID method of the mail client and then search for unseen emails. This will return the response and also email ID bytes. So if the response is okay, we know the connection to Gmail is set up correctly. And otherwise we will just print that searching for new emails failed. So this will tell us that our service does not work anymore. So if the response was okay, we can then extract the email IDs and then we can check how many emails we've got. So if we've got uh, email ID length of zero, we know that we don't have any unseen emails in our email client. And then we will just return an empty list. Otherwise, we will set up a new list and then we will use the email IDs to loop over these email IDs and we will fetch the body of that email ID. So we got our email data and again, we check if the response from Gmail was okay. If it's not okay, we know that we were not able to fetch this new email. And then if everything worked, we will extract the raw email data and then use the message from bytes function from the email module and extract the actual email message 
from that raw email. Now we've got our email message, but we are still not done yet because we want to extract the sender name and also the sender email address from this email message. We can extract that uh, with the key from, and then we will append that information to this new emails list. So we will append the email message itself and also the sender name and sender address. So we know who sent the email and what is the content of the email. After that, we will also mark that email as seen. So we won't process it again. And then at the end, we will call the logout method. So every time we uh, run that fetch function, we will create a new login and also a logout. And at the end, we will just return that list of emails. Okay, after creating the fetch logic, we can create the send logic. And this will be quite easy in comparison because we only use the MIME multipart class. We will create an instance and then set attributes. So we will set the from attribute, the to attribute, and also the subject attribute. We will use our current user to send the email and send it back to a recipient. And the recipient will be the sender here. So we will extract that from the emails then and set this to the recipient. And the subject will be set also from outside this function. And then we will just attach that body, which is also an argument here. And yeah, then we've got our message object and we can send our email. So let's do that. And first we create a new SMTP connection. This is for sending the emails. This is the SMTP server we defined in the environment file and the port for the SMTP server. We will start a new T TLS connection, then log in with the user and the password and then set the message as string and then use the send email method from the server we created here. Use our current user, the recipient, and also the text. And then we will terminate the connection to the server. Okay, now we've got our logic for sending and retrieving emails. So we can now create the logic for the AI system. So we go to the support.py and first make our imports. So we will import from Langchain, the LLM chain, and also the chat open AI class, a prompt template, and very important from Doctran, we use the Doctran property extractor because we want to extract the correct categories and issues of our email and the Doctran property extractor is very helpful to do so. So let's set up our new class. We call that class AI customer support, and then we will set up our OpenAI API model. We will use GPT 3.5 Turbo there. And then we set up our properties for Doctran. For our properties, we want a category and the description is the type of email this is. So we've got different categories, complaint, refund request, product feedback, customer service, and other. And then we also want the mentioned product. We want to extract that from the email too. Description is just the product mentioned in the email and then the issue description, a brief summary or an explanation of the problem encountered with the product. So the AI can respond to the problem correctly. After that, we will also want to extract the name of the person who wrote the email. So for example, if the person is John Doe, we want to set up the email with hello, dear Mr. John Doe or whatever, and want to always uh, be personal in our response. Okay, after setting the properties, we will create a new method, interpret and evaluate, and this will contain the prompt template for the LLM. So the prompt template is your AI customer support that writes friendly emails back to customers, address the category, the mentioned product, and also the issue. The extracted properties is a dictionary which will be extracted by Doctran, and this will be passed to our prompt template. So now we've got everything set up correctly in our prompt template, and then we will actually create our prompt. So we will set up the LLM, we will set up the prompt template, set up a normal LLM chain, and then run the predict method. The input here is just an empty string because we don't uh, add any additional information here. This uh, prompt template contains everything we need for our response. And we will just return the result from this method. So this is a, a new email uh, created by OpenAI. Okay, now let's create our get email content function. This is just a little helper function to actually retrieve the correct 
uh, email content. So it can be multi-part or text and everything will be just extracted correctly. Nothing really to worry about here. More interesting is the process email function. And here we will retrieve one single argument, the email message, and we will call get email content. So we will actually uh, get the correct um, text of the email. And then we will just pass that email content to the document class. This is a class from LangChain and, and we will set the email content to the page content property. So we will use that to pass this whole document now to Doctrine. And we can set up the Doctrine property extractor with our properties we set up in the constructor of this class and also use the OpenAI model which will also be set up in the constructor. So this will create a new property extractor and we will run the property extractor a transform document method. So this has to be an async function and this will extract our categories of the documents. This will also return a class. So we want to extract the correct properties there. So this is actually a list and we want to retrieve the metadata and the extracted properties now contains actually the dictionary we want to uh, use. And then we pass that extracted properties to our interpret and evaluate method. So this is the dictionary and we pass that dictionary now to the LLM. This will set up our LLM prompt template here. Here you can see it extracts the category, the issue description and so on and pass it to the LLM. So this method here will return our new email uh, text. And from the method itself, we want to return the extracted properties and also the evaluation result. After creating all of the logic, we can now stick everything together in the main.py. We will import the email fetcher class and the AI customer support class, also a load.env to load our environment variables from the .n file and also use async.io because we run everything in an async context here. So let's create a new function called fetch and process emails. This will be an async function that takes two arguments, the fetcher and the AI support. I think it's clear that these are the email fetcher and the AI customer support class, um, or better said, an instance of these classes. And in the function itself, we will create a while loop to actually run that loop forever. And then every 10 seconds, we will try to fetch new emails. And if we have new emails, we will process them. So what we're going to do here is we check for new emails. So we run the fetch new emails method. So this will retrieve the new emails and we can iterate over these new emails and uh, extract the new email message, the sender name and the sender address. So again, just to re um, remember, this will return a list of uh, emails. Here you can see this will append the email message, sender name and sender address. So this is why we can iterate over this list like this. So what we're gonna do now is we check if the sender address is in the email whitelist. And if that's not the case, we will just ignore that email and continue with the loop. If the email is in the whitelist, we can process it and we just pass the email message to the process email method from the AI support class. This will return the extracted properties and more important, the evaluation result. And we can now create a new email with this information. And we will send a set the subject to just AI customer support reply, and then use the email fetcher and send a new email with the sender address, the subject, and also important, the evaluation result. We can normally also ignore that kind of information here too, because we actually don't need it. And after sending the email, we will sleep for 10 seconds. So this function will only run every 10 seconds. And yeah, now we can create a main function where we will load our environment variables. We will create an instance of the email fetcher and an instance of the AI customer support. We will pass in the model. You can also use GPT-4 here, but that's the default model here. I think it's the most cheapest and also effective model for creating such a service. So now we can pass the fetcher and the AI support instances here to the fetch and process email method, because this is an async method, we have to await that function. 
And yeah, now we only have to run the main function and we do it like this. So if name is main, then we will use async.io run and just call the main method here. So now we are finished and we can try out our email system. Okay, now let's try the service. And what I did was I added my personal email to the whitelist.yaml file. And now we're gonna send an email from that account. The email text will be subject trouble with my car. Hello, I bought that car of model XYZ. And yeah, just some information, also the name, John Smith and so on. So we first gonna start the service, python main.py. This should now create a new while loop, checking for new emails. As you can see, we don't have any emails in our inbox. And on my other screen, I will now send an email to my server. And if I do that, I will just normally expect here to uh, create a new email instance. Again, let's wait for a few seconds. So I can see it, this is from my personal email, this is my personal name. And if I go back into my personal email here, then I can see that I received an email from myself. Dear John Smith, so I was addressed correctly. I just said, uh, best regards, John Smith. So I'm addressed correctly. Thank you for reaching out our complaint regarding the model. I'm sorry to hear that and so on and so on, I think. The email itself is pretty nice and is yeah better than many other customer service emails. So yeah, that's it. That was the project. This is how you can set up an AI customer service. So if you have questions, write them in the comments. And if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video, of course. Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye.